he's an individual that um, um, that is deeply loved by many people, and um, and we do, we cannot lose sight of that. Tonight, two RCMP officers have their charges stayed after being charged with manslaughter in the 2017 death of a Wet'suwet'en and Gitsan man. We cannot let this linger any longer. One of the survivors in the film has passed away, and we lose um, people every day that have been impacted by this school. A documentary on Illa Lacrosse Residential School wins two awards at the Toronto Short Film Festival, while those involved with the film say it's bittersweet. And you may have noticed a lot of people looking at the skies today. The first solar eclipse in almost 45 years showed up in Canada. Hello and welcome to ABTN National News on this Monday evening. I'm Sav Jonesa. It was announced on Friday that two Prince George RCMP officers who had been previously charged with manslaughter with the death of Dale Culver had their charges stayed. First Nation leaders in the province are outraged. The family have been calling for changes in the justice system for years. ABTN's Lee Wilson reports. The family of Dale Culver a father from the Wet'suwet'en and Gitsan nations, have spent almost seven years calling for justice, following his death during an arrest in Prince George in 2017. Debbie Pierre is Culver's cousin and explained the heartbreaking process the family has been going through, dealing with levels of the justice system to find answers. Ensuring that Dale does not become just a file number or a case number, uh, he's an individual that um, um, that is deeply loved by many people, and um, and we do, we cannot lose sight of that. In 2023, the BC Prosecution Service charged two RCMP officers with manslaughter, Constables Paul Saint Marie and Jean Francis Monet, as well as three obstruction of justice charges against Sergeant John Asubio Cruz, Constables Arthur Dalman, and Clarence McDonald. Following recommendations from a police oversight body, the Independent Investigations Office, who recommended charges in 2020. Last week, the family was hopeful, but frustrated with the delays and lack of clarity. Our family has no trust right now in policing. And it, it pains me to know that my immediate family that live in Prince George, where this incident happened, they are looking over their shoulders. How is that safety in Canada? On Friday, the BC Prosecution Service announced a stay of the court proceedings on the death of Culver in a public statement. The BC Prosecution Service announced today that there is no longer a reasonable prospect of conviction regarding charges that have previously been approved against two members of the Prince George RCMP. The document states the Crown had questions about Culver's cause of death. An initial pathologist who recommended blunt force head trauma contributed to his death. A second pathologist disagreed with the initial assessment, determined the cause of death, acute and chronic effects of methamphetamine following a struggle. In a press release, the BC First Nation Leadership Council expressed outrage over the charges being stayed, calling it categorically unacceptable. Once again, the justice system has let First Nations people down as it fails to move this case forward to trial. And I question the ability of the current system to deliver justice in a fair and an equitable manner. We will continue to follow this developing story. Lee Wilson, APTN National News, Kitimat. The BC Indigenous Justice Council is currently hosting a three-day forum in Vancouver that's focused on reforming the justice system. APTN's Tina House joins us from the event. Thank you. We're at the third annual BC Forum for Justice and joining me today is the chair of the board, Poodley, Corey Wilson. Thank you for joining us this Thanks morning. For coming. Thanks for coming. It's a very exciting day. Glad you're here. 
Well, thanks for having us. So can you tell me what's happening over the next couple of days? Uh, well, this is our third annual Justice Forum. We've had, uh, over the last couple of years, we've had two prior to this, but this one is really exciting because this is an action Justice Forum. We're going to be launching also our, our Indigenous Women's Justice Strategy, which is the first of its kind, so we're very excited about that. And we have the most people ever, over 60%, uh, about 470 people, over 60% have come from First Nations communities. So it, we're really, really excited about what we're going to accomplish. That sounds pretty amazing. I mean, we're talking about some pretty big issues here and reforming the justice system. What do you propose happens in, in order to do that? Uh, well, the reality is, as we know, the justice system has not treated Indigenous people fairly. They're the negative end of every social economic indicator in this country, in this province, grossly overrepresented in all the negative areas in the justice system as well. So we need to change that. So the only way to change that is by having bold, honest, courageous conversations. I often have been t uh, heard to say that we don't need allies in this. We need accomplices. We need people to get down and dirty with us and to make sure that this systemic change happens. It's systemic change that has to happen. It's not about putting in a program for one year and trying this and trying that how do we it's about how do we leverage and work together all the actors in the justice system and in com from community members to all the levels of government we have to work together to ensure that indigenous people are properly supported and uh, if they do find themselves in the justice system that it becomes an experience where they can be diverted out or they can be supported with new skills and abilities well in the system and that their nation knows where they are their family knows where they are and we can do whatever we possibly can to wrap that person up and move them on to something else. That sounds incredible. You have a list of incredible speakers coming up. Can you tell me who's joining us for the next couple of days? Oh, we have all kinds of people. We have, you know, people from the community, from justice workers. Our first speaker today is a woman named Darla. She's from, uh, she's Blackfoot woman, and she's just incredible. So she's going to talk about her own story, her own work at the community level. To, of course, the representatives of First Nations Leadership Council will be here. We have some ministers coming on on Wednesday. So we have all kinds of different speakers. But what we really have are people who are passionately committed to to doing something different, to not only transforming the criminal justice system, but also making sure that we revitalize Indigenous traditions and ways in lawmaking is also what we want to do in our Track 2 initiatives. Amazing. Thank you so much yeah, for all your thanks. work, Corey Wilson. Nice to see you as Thank always. You. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you in studio. A coroner's inquest into the death of four Indigenous women who died at a shelter in Whitehorse begins today. Our reporter Sarah Connors gives us some background as the inquest begins. For the next three weeks, a coroner's inquest will be looking into the deaths of four Indigenous women who died at the Whitehorse Emergency Shelter. 35-year-old Cassandra Warville and 34-year-old Miranda Tejia Charlie died at the shelter in January 2022. 38-year-old Josephine Elizabeth Hager and 52-year-old Darla Skookum died in early 2023. All of the women were accessing services at the shelter at the time of their deaths. Yukon government operated the shelter between 2019 to late 2022 when it was taken over by the Council of Yukon First Nations and nonprofit Connective. On Friday, Yukon's premier apologized on behalf of the government for the women's deaths. Cassandra, Miranda, Josephine, and Darla were seeking our help and their lives still ended too soon. For this, we are deeply sorry. Yukon's coroner service says the point of an inquest is not to cast blame, but to determine the circumstances surrounding a person's deaths. It can also make recommendations to prevent deaths in similar circumstances. Yukon's premier says his government will be looking into the recommendations once they are released. Sarah Connors, APTN National News, Whitehorse. Police are investigating after fires destroyed the band office and a home on a First Nation in Northern Ontario last week. In a press release, Nishnabe Eski police say they were called out to a fire on the North Spirit Lake First Nation around 3.40 a.m. Thursday morning. Upon arrival, police say they found the band office on fire, an abandoned home engulfed in flames. No injuries have been reported as a result of the fires. The investigation is ongoing. This is the fourth major fire in Northwestern First Nations in Ontario since January. 
The high cost of groceries in Nudavut came up during a question period in Ottawa on Monday. A recent APTN Investigates piece found that grocery prices have continued to rise in northern Canada, even with the creation of the federal subsidy program Nutrition North. This has led to questions of whether all of the subsidy is being returned to consumers. NDP MP Laurie Idlout asked Parliamentary Secretary Yvonne Jones when the government was going to fix the program, but did not really get an answer. Grocery prices in the north are still sky high. In the latest flyer from Northmar in Iqaluit, a jar of pasta sauce is over $10. When I asked the Minister of Northern Affairs about the Broken Nutrition North program, he pointed to internal reviews and studies. Indigenous peoples and northerners do not need more studies. They need to put food on the table. When will the Liberals stop the delays and fix nutrition? North so people can put groceries on the table. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Northern Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague for her question. We know that affordability is an issue for all Canadian families, and we know that it is even a larger issue across the North. That's why in our time in government, we have doubled our investment in programs like Nutrition North. We've added to programs like the Harvester's Investment Program to allow people to have affordable foods that come from the land. We'll continue to work with the territories and all communities to support them in, in achieving affordable food and nutritious food for their communities. Two First Nations men who spent nearly 20 years in prison for a murder they didn't commit and spent decades clearing their names are now suing all three levels of government for the wrongful conviction of which they were finally acquitted only last year. Brian Anderson and Alan Woodhouse were sentenced to life when they were teens for the killing of a man in 1973. The men have filed separate suits naming the Manitoba government, the Attorney General of Canada, and the City of Winnipeg. They claim they were wrongfully convicted as a result of racism. Both are seeking an unspecified amount for damages and costs related to their convictions. We need to step aside for a quick break, but coming up next, a birthday celebration for a notable man. Chief Wilton Littlechild turns 80. This man has changed the reality of First Nations, Métis and Inuit people in this territory and in this country.
Welcome back. Hundreds of well-wishers were on hand Saturday at the River Cree Resort and Casino on the Enoch Cree Nation in Alberta. They were there to celebrate the 80th birthday of Chief Wilton Littlechild, one of the most accomplished persons in Canadian history. APTN's Chris Stewart has more. It was a night to honor the accomplishments of Chief Wilton, Willie Littlechild. Master's degree in phys ed, law degree, medal winning athlete in swimming, hockey and triathlon, helping create the North American Indigenous Games and the World Indigenous Games. Member of Parliament, Order of Canada, twice, four Tom Longboat Awards. The accolades go on. Irene Warren, who calls Chief Littlechild brother, put together the celebration of his birthday and accomplishments. Many guests flew in from all over Turtle Island to be here. Jody Calhoun Stonehouse, who was running for the Alberta NDP leadership, emceed. There is no way anyone could do what that man has accomplished. His work on the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples was decades in the making. He was a former commissioner with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. All of his work on the 94 calls to action. This man has changed the reality of First Nations, Métis and Inuit people in this territory and in this country. To open the door former the AFN Chief Perry Bellegarde was on hand on behalf of himself and current National Chief Cindy Woodhouse Nipenek. He's just done so much. He's a mentor, he's a role model. He's kind of like how to do it. You know, he's a survivor of residential schools. He was one of our TRC commissioners. Like the, the man is amazing. And so tonight we're surrounding him with family and friends just to say thank you, Willie. Happy birthday, Willie. We love you and, and many more to come. Senator Patty Lubican Benson told a story of Wilton's role in the 1982 Constitution Act. Willie traveled to London, England to appear before the British courts. The goal was to delay the patriation of the Canada's Constitution until the treaties were recognized in the constitutional documents. It took two years and the raising of concerns before an international audience, including the United Nations and the British Parliament, by both Indigenous activists and lawyers before the Canadian government finally agreed to include Section 35 in the Constitution of 1982. And we have Willie to thank for that. And longtime friend and Olympic gold medalist Billy Mills honored his friend with stories from their time together in sports. You admired him, but to compete against him, you learned from him. And, and to know him is to love him. And I think tonight is a beautiful example of the lives, Willie, that you have touched. And what brings us all together in common, we all love Willie Little Child. After people lined up to get a short conversation or photo, myself included, I asked him what his favorite moment was. I think just sharing the evening with family, I think it really is touching because in residential school, of course, that was the impact was separation of family. And to have everyone come together as families and then as a community family is just really special. Chris Stewart, APTN National News, Enoch Cree Nation, Alberta. A documentary on Illa Cross Residential School has now won two awards. Despite taking home a trophy, those involved with the picture say the feeling, feeling is bittersweet. Our reporter, Rachel May, has more. We wanted to do whatever we could to help, you know, um, help them get justice served. Director of Waiting for Justice, Matt LeMay, says the documentary sheds light on the A La Crosse Residential School, the impact on Métis survivors, and the journey to justice. Despite being run from 1889 to 1937, A La Crosse survivors were excluded from both the Residential School Settlement Agreement and the Day School Settlement Agreement. An ongoing class action lawsuit by the survivors of A La Crosse Residential School has been filed in hopes of bringing both the provincial and 
federal levels of government to the bargaining table when it comes to compensation. There's nothing more powerful than the hearing the survivors, you know, share their own stories. LeMay and executive producer Crystal Martin have won two awards for the short film Waiting for Justice, earning both Best Short Documentary at the Toronto Short Film Festival and the Best History Film at the Toronto Documentary Features and Short Film Festival. Martin says she hopes the film unites people with Métis residential school survivors. And I think this is the time that we need to start doing that is really uh, supporting our uh, Métis relatives um, in whatever way that we can so that survivors can finally seek that justice that they've been waiting for for decades. Métis Nation Saskatchewan helped to produce the film. Vice President Michelle Leclerc says this isn't just a legal issue, it's an ethical issue. We cannot let this linger any longer. One of the survivors in the film has passed away and we lose um, people every day that have been impacted by this school. A website has been created for people to view the film, unitedforsurvivors.ca. The website also includes a letter that viewers can send calling on members of parliament to negotiate a fair settlement with survivors of the Isle Lacrosse Residential School. Rachel May, APTN National News, Saskatoon. We have to take one last break now, but we'll see you when we return. Welcome back. Time now for our photo of the day. This was the eclipse from the beaches of Prince Edward Island. Rebecca Christensen was able to capture this image as the sun was hidden by the moon. Thanks, Rebecca. If you have a great photo, send it to share at aptn.ca for the chance to be our next photo of the day. Now let's take a look at tomorrow's weather forecast. It'll be plus four in Charlottetown, plus one in St. John's. Minus two in Kujuak, minus three in Nain. It'll be plus nine and sunny in Quebec City, plus 16 and sunny in Montreal. It'll be 18 in Toronto and 18 in North Bay. 
16 in Timmins and 6 in Sioux Lookout. Churchill will be plus 5 and 13 in Puckatawagan. Winnipeg will be 18 and plus 9 in Barrens River. 13 in Yorkton and 13 in Swift Current. 12 in Stony Rapids, 14 in Meadow Lake. 13 in Rain in Fort McMurray, 5 in High Level. 13 in Medicine Hat and 12 in Edmonton. 14 in Kamloops and 13 in Vancouver. 9 in Prince George with some rain and 12 in some sun in Fort Nelson. 7 in Mayo and minus 3 in Old Crow. Plus 3 in Sun and Yellowknife, 0 in Norman Wells. Minus 5 in Colville Lake and minus 10 in Saks Harbor. It'll be 0 in Baker Lake, minus 1 in Chesterfield. Minus 4 in Snow in Iqaluit and minus 14 in Resolute. A retail shop in Brisbane, Australia that only sells First Nations products is providing an outlet for more than 100 black businesses from around the country. Open House has been operating for five years to raise awareness and demand for unique brands and products. Here is a story from our friends at NITV, NITV in Australia. From jewellery and homewares to clothing and books. Open House in Brisbane's West End is all First Nations products. It's definitely the amazing work of many, many creative people. Um, there's probably over 120 different stockists different First Nations art centres from all around Australia, um, small local makers, um, more established small Australian brands. The brainchild of Mia Godding and some established black labels, the shop also provides an outlet for up and coming artists, designers and small businesses. I think it's a combination of awareness um, and more and more First Nations um, designers, makers, small businesses, um, you know, getting into the market and being seen and, um, you know, hopefully that's where we help to um, play a role in, in that growth. After five years in business, the support of the community has been crucial to the store's success. We're really lucky to be um, in such a supportive community. People really value what we do and what we, um, what we offer. Um, so we feel like we support the community and feel very supported by the community. Self-determination through art, fashion and business. Dan Rennie, NITV News. Before we go tonight, you may have heard that there was a solar eclipse that could be seen in the skies over North America today. In Ottawa, you got almost full totality. You needed special glasses to be able to look at the solar eclipse. It's when the moon passes between the Earth and sun and blocks direct sunlight for a few minutes. The last time a full solar eclipse happened in Canada was in 1979. The next one won't happen again until 2044. I sure hope no one hurt their eyes trying to get a glimpse of that special event. Well, another day of uh, another episode of APTN National News has come to an end. For news anytime, you can check out our website at aptnnews.ca. I'm Sav Jonza, and from all of us here at APTN News, thank you so much for joining us today.